One of the things that I think we all think about is, um, is partnerships and collaboration, and what does that mean in philanthropy? Um, our next speaker is going to talk about the paradox of philanthropy, so please help me welcome John Abley, the co-founder and director of Boston Scientific. Thank you. Well, it's interesting to follow uh, rather inspiring uh, projects. Um, my, my impression uh, traveling around the, the country is uh, I, I think we need more of this, and I think getting the movement going is critical. Uh, what that means, however, depends upon uh, who you are and where you come from. Uh, it's, 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 everything depends upon the uh, perspective of the uh, donor, the user. How many of you have read The Gospel of Wealth? Have any of you? One hand went up. <laughs> well, let me say something. It wasn't just uh, written for the unicorns. Uh, yes, uh, he, he was a unicorn of his time, uh, Andrew Carnegie. Uh, but in fact, uh, this book, which of course is a bio, but in it, uh, there is a, uh, uh, a five-page essay on how the system ought to work. He was a great system thinker. And uh, he was very concerned, remember this is the late 1800s, uh, about the huge gap between the wealthy and the poor. How ironic. Uh, that design thinking that he applied to his philanthropy Remember, he's kind of the father of the library system in this country. Uh, was you know, enormously powerful and transformative to society. It really was a movement. And that was a different world that we, we lived in. If you think about the power of philanthropy, uh, it has so many things it can do for society because it is really an option in order to so, uh, to fulfill, if you will, the commons that allows all of us to succeed. So we have security and health and education, and that has to be a commons-driven tool. And that's where philanthropy can play a really critical role. Uh, the convening role, all the things that are in the, this, this list. I think perhaps the most significant is a uh, foundation and I speak both as a donor and a foundation leader, uh, and I do both, uh, we can be politically incorrect. And sometimes that's really essential to be able to accomplish what, what needs to happen. And it, this leads to the disruptive innovation component of how you change cultures. And how you do that and how it evolves over time is really critical. Many people have great ideas, but they sort of fail when it comes to implementing those ideas over, uh, and I use this word cautiously, scale. You know, certainly that is a classic Silicon Valley word, but in fact, scaling is very difficult in the philanthropic world, and one has to create sharing opportunities as this meeting is. Uh, listening to the, the, the Microsoft model, listening to the uh, stories that you were talking about is really important to understand. One of the concerns that I have had in, in the practice, if you will, and I don't even like to document it financially, uh, but it's the, the failures of philanthropy. And it's the failures of well-intended, compassionate giving. And it can lead to disempowerment of the people receiving. A lot of people sort of forget the lesson of the Bible 101. Teach them to fish. Don't give them the fish. And how do you do that? Because some people can't even learn to fish. But maybe they can. Maybe you made the decision too early. So there's an awful lot of feel-good philanthropy. And to be able to make that feel-good turn into something that really produces results is critical. Having the opportunity to struggle, in fact, is a blessing. When you learn that, it really makes you a stronger person afterwards. Therefore, it's not simply what you do and the target of what you do, it's how you do it. It can totally change the results 
and the attitude and the way people behave. Duff Seidman here, this, this book is, is a really good one if you uh, haven't, haven't read it. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. This is the, the be vulnerable part because there are some, some uh, sad, sad elements to it. Uh, I did start a business. The business did turn out to be quite successful. You know, it was sort of every day was the first day of the rest of your life sort of uh, world. Uh, but at one point I realized that the resources that I had were bigger than a breadbasket. And at that point, because I had grown up in a uh, uh, middle class family, but struggled pretty, pretty hard to uh, uh, do what we did. Lost father in the war and mother's a violin teacher. Uh, but the opportunity to do philanthropy was really non-existent from a money point of view, but certainly when in terms of helping neighbors, that's what we did. Suddenly realizing that you have more than enough assets, what you do with it, that was the real concern that I had. By that point, I had children, and I was really afraid of the poor little rich girl syndrome. Barbara Hutton, that's the actual story of, of the woman who went through that. And then I read this book called The Legacy of Inherited Wealth, and it was, frankly, rather depressing. It's 50 essays by children of uh, good families, and the problems they describe in their, who are they, are they, their family people, and is it this drive that the uh, uh, patriot of the family created uh, that, that allows them to do what they do, what do they owe, lots of unanswered questions in people who are frankly quite disempowered. And I said, I certainly didn't, didn't want to have that, and how do you avoid that is a real challenge. Uh, so. Obviously, what would the solution be? Start a foundation, and let's share and learn together. And there's thousands of stories very much like, like mine here. And initially, what we did is we got together and we said, we'll just vote on different uh, uh, opportunities to, to give. But the problem with that is you'd have, it was a family of five, uh, you'd have four losers and one winner. So this was not gonna be the, the, the solution. There are lots of other variations of that, but in effect, that was not gonna be a good exercise. We tried it, and it failed. So the next failure was, I got an idea, let's just take turns. But there was a long cycle between turns, so by the time you got your turn again, you'd almost forgotten about philanthropy altogether. So that really wasn't a very good idea. <laughs> Uh, so finally, what we did is we ended up with sort of an individual focus. Each person had their own particular interest, and they would work on that. But then we would have collaboration. The collaboration was basically by choice. Now, we have a staff, and they would pick these various activities, and, uh, uh, or they would simply do the due diligence that was uh, required on a choice that was made by one of the family members. But then we would actually collaborate between one or all family members, and if there was a disaster, for example, uh, those we would do all family uh, support. But everyone was always going to be somewhat entrepreneurial and creative, because that's sort of where we came from. So if you think of the things that we focused on, uh, apolitical was really critical. We didn't want to get into the political side of things because then you end up splitting uh, the, the idea. So that's where the how becomes very important. Create ways that find commonalities. Uh, in fact, find supporters of, of differing parties to agree with uh, your idea. Then uh, empowering the people was critical. And that means you've got to find the right people and you've got to find the right mentors because that's, uh, they need that help to uh, move them forward. Obviously, all of these factors they can go on and on. It's, it's a due diligence process like you do in anything. And it's the, the process of designing the actual project and making sure you've got a mission that can be conveyed to a lot of people that does have measurable uh, results to it and uh, pursuing that process. But it's really systems thinking, as we showed that uh, uh, Carnegie himself thought, and recognizing that you can't put everything 
to the recipient. You need a management system to make sure that the outcomes really happen. And following that and making sure your, your measurements are based on outcomes, not on dollars. Dollars are the process. You need them, they're essential. But the, the goal is, is the outcome. It's not the number of vaccinations that count, it's the health of the population that counts. So uh, I'm a big believer in the, the open uh, construction here, and that means that you must be very candid about your failures or problems and get people involved so that they own the results, uh, not uh, following rules, but really following goals. And at the end of the day, Creating a success model is really essential. You've got to recognize it, you have to celebrate it, you've got to understand it and make sure other people understand it. One of my favorites is FIRST Robotics. How many of you are familiar with FIRST? Yeah, about a quarter. Uh, it's it's a, a program that's been around 25 years, has about a half a million kids involved, and uh, is focusing on K-12 kids it gets them to build robots that compete in a very ingeniously designed game that requires them to collaborate. Uh, and uh, we all have favorites that we believe in, and that's really important. And hopefully what we do is talk among ourselves and make sure that we are learning what those different elements are. And I'll close uh, with this and one more. This is the Argosy Foundation. And uh, we have in our website our guidelines and guiding values. Just Argosy Foundation is all you need. Uh, and it's really important if you are in whatever you're doing to make sure you have all, all the guidelines that everybody can understand because there are otherwise going to be a lot of potential conflicts uh, that arise. And so I'm going to close with, with a classic book by uh, Dan Ariely uh, called Predictably Irrational. And this is about the observation that all of us, the brightest among us, always end up doing some things that are really stupid. And it's, re <laughs> it's very important to recognize that's part of life. Don't get hung up about it. But that's why you have groups of people making a decision rather than just one. Thank you very much.